and lots of parallels. Uh, again, this has happened on, on a number of episodes here on the show because the album was produced by Howard Benson, which Less Than Jake has uh, much history with Howard. The, uh, you guys recorded at Bay 7 Studios out in Valley Village uh, and Sparky Dark Studio in Calabasas. Uh, Howard's, Howard's place is out there with engineer Mike Plotnikoff, who's just absolutely amazing, and Hatch, the engineer, who's can't, can't say enough about him. But uh, what was that like and how did you decide on Howard to do the third record okay so it's it's a pretty involved long story with our uh relationship and saga with with howard and to be honest this is sort of the most exciting and intriguing parts of being able to do this podcast with you because i knew that you did hello rock view with him and that was actually a big <laughs> reason that we we trusted him with us it was like that you know that we fought, first of all it seemed like such a strange pairing to us that that record was made with him it's like sort mm -hmm. of an anomaly and also, it just sounds so so fantastic that um, it's sort of undeniable. And so that, you know, just gave us um, this like seed of doubt, like, you know, maybe there is more to this guy than 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 meets the eye and is like on the mm -hmm. surface of, of his discography. Um, and yeah, so I, I, I actually tried to hold off listening to your episode with Howard because I wanted to sort of <laughs> dig in on our own. But I'm yeah. glad that that I did because it gave me a lot of insight to his background and how he sort of found his way with you guys. Um, and also, I, I, I mean, I, I could go into that episode for, for a long time, but it really well, was. Uh, I think it was a good pre prep for this. Yeah, and I had uh, Nick recently on from All American Rejects, and they recorded with Howard. And so we we spent probably ten minutes just talking about Howard sweatpants and Oreo cookies. So uh, oh my god, feel, feel free to go for it. <laughs> I I just know that the topic of uh, and character of Howard Benson is gonna is going to dominate a lot of this conversation, just because he is just such a fascinating guy. He is absolutely one of a kind, <laughs> and and I should just go into this like whole conversation saying. Like, I have absolutely nothing but admiration and love for this individual. Like, truly, I think he's one of the great rock producers of our time. Uh, oh, but, yeah. you know, oh, I yeah. might I, I might say some things along the course of this conversation that would like make people think otherwise. But I, I truly admire the man fully. Well, he is uh, set in his ways. He is uh very sure of himself not in a cocky way he just he knows his stuff uh but he's a little crazy and you kind of have to be to to be in his position did it help that he's a philly guy a hundred percent and i don't even think we knew that until meeting him like we just yeah. we we assumed he was like an la born and bred kind of guy because he was yeah. just so ingrained in in that sound i had no idea and i think that maybe that was probably one of the reasons he was uh, entertaining the idea of us. Cause like it was, it was sort of strange. Like we were not, um, you know, even though we had been on Geffen and had like a little bit of success, I don't think that, um, I don't know. It wasn't like producers were knocking down our door, at least not in the way that Howard was like, Howard was really courting us for some reason. And we had worked together on based on a true story for two songs. Like, at the end of um, the bulk of working on Based on a True Story, our sophomore record, we were kind of, you know, us and the label were a little bit um, feeling like there was there was a little bit more that needed to be done with the singles. And we w wanted to try to recut them with um, like another producer or two. And so we ended up going with Howard Benson because I think we were impressed with the sound of the um, My Chem record and, and a few other things. And had worked with him at Bay 7, uh, like kind of in the same fashion that we did Island and really loved it. And then when we were working on one other track at Tracks East in Jersey with Eric Rachel, the, the opening track, Making Love to the Camera, we were there in the studio and we got sent the, the first mixes for the Based on a True Story, Howard Benson singles. And we were like, really put off by how much editing had happened after we left the studio. They had kind of almost been unrecognizable in the way that they were returned to us. Just like a whole lot of liberties taking flying things around and just like, yeah, really kind of, in my opinion, messing with um, the composition of the song in, in a yeah. way that I didn't like sign off on. And it was just kind of like, are you guys cool with this? And it wasn't like we were cool uh, that... with it. Like it, it was a lot of like note passing and stuff to even get that to across the plate. 
So it was off to a precarious, you know, sort of relationship with him because like I really did enjoy tracking with him. But then afterwards, I felt like this sort of like violation of trust, like, oh, I uh -huh. don't know. You know, this guy is sort of like doing a little bit of funny business in the edit that, uh, you know, now I have to like kind of fight to get my, you know, song the way that I want it to sound. And it's it was sure. like an uphill battle. So it was. Uh, yeah. Like I, he, he was almost sort of cast out of our mind as even a possibility for to, you know, as a producer for the future. And so when it was getting. Yeah. When it was getting discussed again, everyone kept mentioning him, like saying, like, Howard really wants to do this record. Like he really loves you guys. He wor loves working with you guys. And we were just like, I don't know, like he was a little shady with the last one. And, and uh -huh. then so we we went out to dinner with him and this was the real like clinching conversation. And he was so straight up with me. He was like, yes, I did that to your songs. Yes, I'll probably do that again to your singles. But here's the thing. I'm going to let you guys have the rest of the record to do absolutely whatever you want with. And I'm going to be upfront with you as upfront as possible with the changes that I'm making. But just expect it. Expect that I'm going to still yeah. be this guy that's going to mess with the stuff. And, and, and it's because what I do and I, and I think that it's for the best. But um, the rest of the record, you guys can like just basically have run of the asylum and like just go as nuts as you want. And I was and I was like, you know, that's that's a fair deal. And I like that he's owning up to everything. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, it was just very upfront. And I was just sort of like, you know what? The rest of the band really likes him. The rest of the ri label li likes him. And I really like this um, this honesty that he's giving me. So I'm going to trust him with the record. And at the end of the day, I'm really glad that it did because it's honestly my favorite starting line full length. I think that it's it was the easiest record for us to cut. And he was definitely the guy for the job.